No, well, obviously you have great love and great affection for Jacques Brel. What, what does it stem from and what, does, what has he brought to your life? Well, um, the idea of doing this show came to me about six years ago. See, I'd seen Brel. Uh, what he brought into my life was in um, around about 1960. I, I was in Belgium, um, and I was, doing a, I was appearing as a singer in, in a song contest. And uh, it, was in a, it was in a fancy casino, but they had all these big acts on at night, and we couldn't afford to see them. And we used to hang out in the bar downstairs. And Brel was the only one of the big names who heard about us and came down and did his whole act in this little bar for all of us poor musicians. And that's the first time and the only time I'd seen him live. And I was both, you know, extremely... Um, touched by the gesture and by his work. And um, about five or six years ago, I, I started um, looking around in my mind for a one-man show to do because I wanted to have that kind of freedom and independence. And I thought of Brel, and I didn't really know what had happened to him between when he retired from the music hall and when he died. And um, you know, I said to my wife, if, if that was an interesting part of his life, it'd be an interesting story to do. And then a long series of coincidences happened, and I, I ended up doing this. That's, what, that's the story of it. All those years, though, was there anything about Brel that influenced your life? Well, French music in general influenced my life. Um, I was, Charles Trenet, in a way, was for me what Brel was for the, for the, the reviewer that I quoted, um, the, the man who wrote the obituary. But French music in general, and Brel was very much part of that. Brel, what Brel does for my life now is more to the point than what he's done over the past years. Every time I do this show, the things that Brel said that I repeat keep me on the straight and narrow. I mean, when I say, um, when you become clever and slick, it's a mortal sin, I can't be being slick after that, even if I've been clever and slick up to that point. Once I've said that, I can't do it anymore. You know? So that's what Brel does for me. Brel Brel does extraordinary things for me in this piece. Is all of the music by Jacques Brel? No. Um, there's a song that I sing at the beginning, the middle, and the end, which I wrote. And there's also a very short piece of a song by Hank Williams. Yes, that's singing. a marvelous moment. <laughs> <laughs> you do it very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best part is the way I set it out. It doesn't matter whether I do it well or not. <laughs> <laughs> Brel, um, was uh, you describe him as being, or he is described in the piece, as being gawky and toothy and, and not very good looking. In actual fact, is it so? He considered himself to be very ugly. Um, lots of people considered him to be very good looking, but he certainly had very prominent teeth, and he was certainly not a good looking man in the, in the classical sense. Um, he considered it a great advantage to have been born ugly because he said, you know, you don't have any of the problems that good-looking people have, so you, you're, you, know, you don't feel like you're the center of the universe. He felt that was a great advantage to him. When he was at his zenith in France, how, how was he compared at, uh, to whom or to what? Well, it was very unique, really. Um, I mean, the people he was compared with would be his contemporaries, which would be Georges Brassens and, and Edith Piaf and, and people like that. Um, but he was very unique. I mean, his, his whole lyrical approach, his whole, I his whole use of ideas. I mean, he was, he's probably the only popular singer who's sung consistently about death and dying, you know, with, uh, with considerable humor. I just looked right at it and said, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was his style. That was his uniqueness, I think. If he were alive today and starting his career, would he be as popular? I'm sure he would, yeah. yeah. You think there was something kind of universal and eternal about him? Yes, certainly. His outlook or what? Yes, I think it's to do with his outlook. It's to do with what he put into his songs, into his words and his music. Yes, and his way of looking at life. His level gaze. <laughs> he hit me in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> a beam will fall. <laughs> 
Was there any problem getting rights or permission to do this? I went to see Brel's widow in um, Brussels and asked about this show. And uh, she said it would be fine with her as long as I didn't try and translate the songs. So that's why they're in French? Well, I was going to do them in French anyway, but it was very nice that she said that because it gave me an excuse. 